for decades, what kind of damage a drone would cause was still virtually unknown until now. Here's the thing. Yes, it's in a lab. Yes, it's a manufactured experiment. Um, notice something, though. That plane isn't moving. <laughs> if the plane was moving, the combined forces would be even higher. DJI really does not like this piece of footage or this research. They have been sending their lawyers to try to have it, you know, removed and debunked and you know, I'm sorry, but these are just the realities. Like, DJI doesn't want bad press. I get that. Drone manufacturers want to keep things, you know, anything bad like this or potentially, um, you know, concerning. Um, you know, they don't really want people to know that because obviously that it affects your decisions to buy their drones. Oh, no. They might lose some money. Ah! Anyway, the thing is... That's that, that's a realistic experiment. That's what could happen. Now, is the likelihood that it's always going to strike a wing surface like that and take out the whole wing? No, probably not. It may glance off a windshield and just crack it. It doesn't matter, though. The fact that it can and the fact that it is likely to happen with the proliferation of uh, more drones means it's something we need to think about. And, you know, there are different ways to deal with that. Obviously, reinforcing <laughs> aircraft, which obviously is, is a non-starter because you're not going to reinforce all aircraft to deal with drone strikes, just like they don't with bird strikes. But they do do things to combat the menace. So at airports, they try to, you know, have uh, loud noises and stuff that goes off that scares birds on a regular basis. They have sometimes resident hawks. So they do things to mitigate bird strike, and airports are also going to be doing things to mitigate drone strikes, such as having anti-drone collision um, systems in place, or drone takedown systems in place where they actually shoot your drone out of the sky, or commandeer control of it via Wi-Fi, via you know some powerful magnetic signal, electromagnetic signal, and take your drone down. Um, I mean, that can happen too. Not that they're necessarily going to be able to totally control your drone, but what they can do is pump out a powerful enough um, radio signal that it'll drown out your controller, and most drones will just, you know, set down or try to return to home at that point. So anyway, you pay attention to stuff like that. I'm not trying to steer you wrong. Um, anyway, one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about on this video is uh, the concept of forces in terms of the physics of drones and hitting things and not just other things but hitting themselves as they land and whatnot why do you care about forces well because it's an important part of flying a drone when you hit things obviously it does damage to the drone and it can do damage to other people and so i thought it would be interesting just to kind of go through some of the very basic physics of how that happens and how you can quickly calculate what a the forces that are involved in and for people that uh, go ooh science and their eyes glaze over fine you know skip on dislike whatever <clears throat> but if you want to learn a few things I might be able to help you out there now do I know everything certainly not I do have a master's of science degree though and an undergraduate diploma in robotics so I know a little bit of you know a little bit of science and I have a good uh, ability to reason and uh, kind of walk through things in a, in a clear and methodical way. <clears throat> but I'm by no means a robotics expert anymore. I'm by no means a drone expert. I'm just a guy with opinions and a background in science. So for what that's worth, hopefully you can take some, uh, learn a few things here today. And if not, maybe you can teach me a few things. So leave some comments down in the, uh, in the comment section. And if I've made any mistakes or things you think I should cover in another video, by all means, please tell me. I'd like to hear about it. Okay, so um, if you haven't done so, please sub to the channel. Really appreciate your support. And if you like the video and enjoy it, please hit the like button. If you hate it, dislike. That's cool too. And if you don't like the video, tell me why. Tell me what you didn't like. Maybe I can fix it. Maybe I've done something that uh, I can improve on. You never know. So we're going to talk about forces this morning. I'll throw some teaching aids up on the screen, graphics, equations, and whatnot. But there's really only one basic equation when it comes to force and your drones, and that is force equals mass of the drone times acceleration. And usually acceleration is by gravity when it's falling, but it could also be acceleration of the drone going forward as you're flying. 
But for the purposes of this discussion, we're really going to be talking about what happens when a drone falls out of the sky, or what happens when a drone hits the table if you're trying to fly, what kind of forces are involved, just so you have an idea of what that feels like. Wallet, you're boring me. I'm cutting your head. I'm cutting your head. Hey! What I'll also do is give you some real world examples. So, if I give you a, a force of, say, 100 newtons, what the heck does that mean in real life? Um, what does it feel like to get a brick dropped on your head from 10 feet? How many newtons is that? So we'll do comparisons to real world things to give you a sense of the kind of forces involved. Some folks that fly drones don't think that they pose any um, hazards to aircraft, but uh, most drones do. The ones under 250 grams, probably not. The mass is so light and the chance that they're going to be up high enough is, is very unlikely. But with the bigger drones, like the DJI Mavics, and the, the Phantoms, and uh, even the Spark, the Spark is 350 plus grams, which is fairly heavy. And the fact that it can go 50 miles an hour, or excuse me, 50 kilometers an hour, <clears throat> provides a lot of force. Now you might be thinking, well, 350 grams times 50 kilometers an hour, that's, that's not that much force. Okay. Maybe it's not that much force, but then what you have to consider is the combined force of something else that it's flying into. Like, so for example, an airplane is going to be hugely massive compared to the drone, and it's going to be flying much, much faster, typically in the range of 100 plus miles an hour for most small craft, and if it's a bigger craft, hundreds of miles an hour, or kilometers an hour. So the combined force is what you have to consider. But anyway, for the purposes of this little discussion, we'll really just be talking about the drone falling out of the sky when you're flying or whatnot, and what those forces look like, right? So simple equation, simple force calculation. So let's pull out a few drones just to get an idea of sizes and weights. So I've got a couple of scales here. This is a one for tiny, tiny things. This one is for slightly larger things. So... Let's get that set to zero. Let's pull out our first drone here. I'm going to pull out this little micro FPV quad, the Eosheen E013. Now I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the weight, but I'll put it on there. 26 grams. So you probably can't see that from there, but anyway, trust me, 26 grams. Okay. Alright, so let's put the little Eosheen 013 on the scale and see what we've got. All right, 27 grams. We'll set that fellow over there. How about the Airhogs DR1? That's a slightly bigger machine. And we've got 47 grams. Okay. How about, oh, let's go with the DJI Tello. Not sure if I can quite get this on the... Oh, I'll have to turn it upside down maybe, let's see. 86 grams, that sounds about right. Okay, and how about, how about the C-Max 23? What's that going to weigh in at? 80, 79, 80? Let's flip it over, see if we can get a slightly different result. Yes, okay, so we'll, we'll call that 79 grams. Okay, what about, oh, what have I got left over here? Oh, the RC Logger. I'll definitely have to flip that over. Um... Actually, hold on. We'll do the Parrot first because I want the battery in for that. Okay, let's do the Parrot Swing. Balance that. And 73 grams. Does that sound about right to people? And that's with battery in. 73 grams, okay. Now, for comparison, the DJI Spark, I think, is 350 grams. So these are all considerably, considerably lighter. I've got a couple other little teeny tiny fellas here that I suppose I could throw on just for kicks. Oh, and we need, we we're going to do the, uh, the Holy Stone HS200. Let's see if I can get that on there. 148. That's a beefy fella. Okay, we'll put you over here. <laughs> Okay, the RC logger battery. Let's get you in here. 
and really I don't need to do too much. I'll just kind of put it in and Velcro's in just so that it's there while we weigh it. Okay, RC logger with battery. Now this is a serious drone. This thing's got brushless motors, 197. Let's try it upside down. 201, that's probably a bit better, 202. Okay, 202 grams, so we'll call that 202 grams. <clears throat> and what else, anything else? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the e Eachine E61, which is a knockoff Mavic Air lookalike. It's awfully cute though. Very fast too, 26 grams. So that's kind of over with these guys here. Yeah. All right, so there we've got quite a gamut of, um, of aircraft. Now, the thing you have to realize with force calculations is that it's proportional to weight, linearly. So the more weight, the more force. What does that mean for you? Well, typically what it means is, and very specifically, so when I've been practicing FPV lately, I've been using these two quads, the uh, Airhogs DR1 and the Eashin E013. Now they're, this one's nearly double the weight. It's got 20 more grams, I think, than the, the Eashin. Let's double check that again. Yeah, so 27 and I think this was like 46, 47. So 20. because this thing is so much lighter than the DR1, the engines require less force to keep it up in the air and when it hits it's going to hit with less force so that means less uh, force is transferred through the printed circuit boards through the wire connections the solder joints uh, the props all that sort of stuff so when you're learning FPV one of the things I want to recommend is get the lightest quad you can possible because that is going to minimize well it's going to be one of the things that will minimize uh, breakage for you this thing being twice as heavy and the motors not being really that great, it hits hard all the time. And what happens is I've had three of these now and they break so quickly I don't get a chance to really learn how to fly them. And I suspect that's going to be the same for any kid that gets this on a Christmas morning or for a birthday or whatever. They're never going to learn to fly FPV on something like this because it just breaks too quickly. Um, and there are other reasons too. I mean, it's not using a real FPV signal, it's using the signal from uh, basically a Wi-Fi signal to your phone to broadcast so it's not real time and there's delays anyway this discussion is about force so but that's the basic that's the basic message I wanted to give to you that force is proportional to mass so the more mass the more force and what I'm gonna do is give you a few slides and a few equations just to kinda give you a sense of what that feels like in the real world because uh, it makes a difference whether you're flying something like this or something like a Mavic 2 or a Phantom or an Inspire. Uh, those are big drones. When they hit things, ouch, it hurts. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah. Force. The force will be with you. Always. Um, I guess that's about it. Force equals mass times acceleration. And we're talking usually about the acceleration of gravity by the Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Keep your shield wall up.